Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again. Thank y'all so much for coming over now. We're back with another Thomas Sowell video. Why they keep making black people look like losers. Um, the thumbnail had like Al Sharpton, Whoopi Goldberg, and I, I for, forget who else, but I want to check this out. Uh, when I, when I say, I mean, when I see titles like this, I'm, I'm, my mind immediately goes to like the victimhood. Um, appreciate y'all coming over. Shout out to all the good humans. Link is always in the description for those who are asking, man, we ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. It is a good reflection on Americans that they tend to be on the side of the underdog. But it is often hard to tell who is in fact the underdog, or why. Many years ago, there was a big lumbering catcher named Ernie Lombardi, whose slowness of foot was legendary. Someone once said that not only was Ernie Lombardi the slowest man who ever played Major League Baseball, Whoever was the second slowest was probably a lot faster runner than Ernie Lombardi. When Ernie Lombardi came to bat, infielders played back on the outfield grass. That gave them more range in getting to balls that Lombardi hit. They could snare line drives that would otherwise be base hits. With ground balls, they could easily throw to first base from the outfield grass and get the slow-moving Lombardi out. Despite all that, Ernie Lombardi had a lifetime batting average of 306 and even led the league in batting a couple of years. Yes, 306. But many Ooh. people said that if Lombardi had had just average speed, he could have been a 400 hitter. One day, as a teenager sitting in the polo grounds, the stadium where the then New York Giants played, I was privileged to watch a historic event. Ernie Lombardi laid down a bunt. The crowd went wild. The play took forever, with Lombardi laboriously clumping down to first base, running as hard as he could, but still not very fast, while the third baseman made a long run in from left field to get to the bunt. We cheered ourselves hoarse, rooting for Big Ernie, as he doggedly but slowly made his way down the first baseline. He barely beat the throw, which set off another explosion of cheers. We were not just cheering for a hometown player. We were rooting for Lombardi to get revenge on those who had taken advantage of him for so long. We were cheering for the underdog. But was Lombardi really an underdog? How many players end up their careers with a lifetime batting average over 300 or with two batting titles? Like most of us, Lombardi was handicapped in some ways and privileged in others. Many people would consider it a handicap to be a black orphan born in the Jim Crow South during the Great Depression of the 1930s. But the home into which I was adopted had four adults, and I was the only child. Many years later, when I was a parent and asked one of the surviving members of that family how old I was when I started walking, she said, Oh, Tommy, nobody knows when you could walk. Somebody was always carrying you. Mm. You can't buy that. A leading historian of education has said, yeah, "Nobody, someone was always carrying you. You know, that re just remind me, like, you know, as a kid, when you would go, like for me, <clears throat> my grandmother, my mother's mother, my mother, mother, they didn't, like, spoil me. But my father, mother, oh, my goodness. Boy, I used to get spoiled, and when he, that's where I got the name Sugar Booger from. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you would get spoiled. So I just remember as a child, like, when we would get in, in the car to go somewhere, I just remember crying because I wasn't going to see my father's mother. We would go to my mother mother house. Uh. And I just remember it because, like, I would always get candy, this and this and that and that. So when he said, like, nobody knew because they was always carrying you around, yeah, I get that. You can't buy that. A leading historian of education has said that the New York City public schools were the best in the country during the 1940s. That was when I went to school there. You can't buy that either. Today... The classes are smaller, the buildings more modern, 
but the education itself is a disaster. Mm. I got the kind of education that people have to go to expensive private schools to get today. Perhaps more important, nobody told me that I couldn't make it because I was poor and black, or that I ought to hate white people today because of what some other white people did to my ancestors in some other time. Uh. Nobody sugarcoated the facts of racial discrimination. But Professor Sterling Brown of Harvard University, who wrote with eloquent bitterness about racism, nevertheless said to me when I prepared to transfer to Harvard, Don't come back here and tell me you didn't make it because white folks were mean. <laughs> he burned my bridges behind me, the way they used to do with armies going into battle, so that they had no place to retreat to and so had to fight to win. One of the problems with trying to help underdogs, especially with government programs, is that they and everyone else start to think of them as underdogs, focusing on their problems rather than their opportunities. Yes. Thinking of themselves as underdogs can also dissipate their energies in resentment of others mm -hmm. rather than spending that energy making the most of their own possibilities. It must have been discouraging for Ernie Lombardi, especially in his early years, to be repeatedly thrown out at first base on balls that would have been base hits for anybody else. But he couldn't let himself dwell on that, not and win two batting titles. Um, <clears throat> I, I said it in the video before, the best way to get your so-called revenge is to make something of yourself. I, I'm going I'm to be honest with y'all, man. I ain't trying to toot my own horn here, but I am living proof of you can make it. I should not be where I am in life. I should not be. If you look at how I grew up, I was on a path of destruction, and it, it had nothing to do with me. It wasn't going to be my fault as far as at such a young age, things just weren't going. I, I didn't have like a normal childhood. You know what I mean? Um, but I didn't let that stop me. Something has to click. You have to be determined. You have to look somewhere for some type of inspiration. You, you got to, you got to do it. If you really want it only, but if you if you don't really want it, you'll sit in that victimhood role. You will. You will sit there and you will live the rest of your life just complaining and pointing the finger instead of looking in the mirror. Because there's, there's going, it's going to be a point in your life where you just got to stop making excuses. You know what I mean? I had so many friends who got jobs and got fired because they kept calling off. And then they'll say something like, man, it, this place, they didn't even like me, this and this. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, you're supposed to be there. You're letting your team down, you know? That's what I'm saying. I am living proof of you can make it. You just have to want to. Can't nobody tell your story better than you. Nobody. There's going to be trials and tribulations, yes. But you have to use that. You have to use that. Um, I, I said everything I went through in life, um, I, I reversed it, you know, and I said, when I get older, like I, I'm never going back to that life. Oh no. Oh no. The victimhood role is very dangerous, man, because what it, what it does is, um, it doesn't. Like, other people can see the potential in your greatness, but you have to see it yourself. And if you don't, you won't. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to be like, ah, oh, this and this and that and that. Man, you got to get out there and work for it. This is 2023. Think about that. 2023, y'all. Yeah. Hey, appreciate y'all coming over. Really enjoyed this video. It started off kind of slow, but I know he was building, building his story. But uh, yeah.
Appreciate all the love and support, man. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.